Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Telford here. Uh, welcome to, what is this, week four of e-learning. Congrats on making it this far. I know that it's been weird um, and frustrating at points, but I hope you guys are staying patient um, and being patient with your teachers, too, as we navigate these waters. Uh, this is my dog, Lola. You're going to see her in some of my videos because um, I'm obviously here at home recording from home. And I have another dog, Reggie, who likes to make an appearance in the background, too. Um, so you'll see them in my videos. All right, so in this video, um, and this might turn into a two-part video, I am going to review the learning expectations for e-learning with you guys, go through the student plan with standards for this last unit, talk about some common evolution misconceptions, and go through some need-to-know terms for this project that you're going to do this week, and then last, we'll go through the weekly plan for this um, week and go through the expectations for the project. Okay, so these last couple weeks are going to be all about evidence for evolution, natural selection, and then the last couple of weeks we will get into taxonomy, which is how organisms are classified, and speciation, which is how new species arise. So this week we're going to focus on evidence for evolution, but first let's um, review some expectations. So this class will be asynchronous, meaning that you guys will do things at your own pace, but you are expected to complete the work on a weekly basis. Um, please use the weekly, the weekly guide as a plan, um, excuse me, the weekly plan as a guide. Here's a screenshot right here on the right. It says biology e-learning plan at the top with the week. So make sure you're using this to stay on track. Please do not spend more than 40 minutes. Really, Mrs. Proctor and I have this planned so that you should not be spending more than 30 minutes um, a day on this class. If you are spending more than 30 minutes a day, please let me or Mrs. Proctor know. Um, and that means we need to make some changes. Please make sure that you're checking your Google Classroom every day, especially because I might post some announces, announcements in there. Mrs. Proctor and my office hours are from 10 to 11, Monday through Friday. So if you need to Zoom with us during that time, let us know and we can set up a meeting. Please make sure that you're communicating with us via email. And then please make sure that you're completing all formative work before the summative will open up. Because the formative work is really going to help you um, before the summative. So we have a project this week and then we'll have two more formal summatives um, later on this unit, and then that's it. So there's just three summative um, projects or tests left. All right, so before jumping in, I would like to go through some common misconceptions in the theory of evolution. This is an activity that we've been doing for a while because I think it's really important to um, talk about what the theory of evolution is, but more importantly, what the theory of evolution is not. Because I know this can be a, a touchy subject, um, it can be controversial, and I think some of the controversy comes from not completely understanding what evolution is and what the theory says. So I'm going to go through some uh, misconceptions that I commonly hear in students, and we're going to talk about each one of those. So the first one is, evolution is a theory, which means it is a guess. So when you guys use the word theory in your everyday life, it's kind of more using more using it as a guess, right? Like I have a theory why um, the cafeteria food is so bad. Um, it's a guess. But in the science realm, theory is based on um, observations and countless facts. So scientific theories are broad explanations for a wide range of phenomena. And in order to be accepted by the scientific community, a theory must be strongly supported by multiple lines of evidence. And that's what you guys are going to explore this first week, are the empirical multiple lines of evidence for evolution. And then evolution is a well-supported and broadly accepted scientific theory. It is not just a hunch. Okay, misconception number two, evolution tries to explain how life started. So the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution, those are two completely different theories. Most of evolutionary biology deals with how life changes after its origin. The definition of evolution is change in genes over time. It has nothing to do with how life started. 
But regardless of how life did start, afterwards it branched and diversified. There's evidence for this. And most studies of evolution focus on those processes. So that's what we're going to focus on, how life changed after life started. We're not going to talk about how um, life started. Another misconception, this one's a little bit tricky, natural selection always favors more complex organisms. So this is a misconception that students usually have that organisms will always evolve to be better or more fit as time goes on. And I'm sure you guys have heard the term survival of the fittest. It should more be like survival of the fit enough. So an example of this, a plant may not have the genes to flourish in a drought or a predator may not be quite fast enough to catch her prey every time she is hungry. So these individuals might not be the fittest in the population, but they are fit enough to reproduce, meaning that they're gonna pass their genes on to the next generation. Another good example of this are the bacteria at the bottom of hydrothermal vents, which are pictured here on the right. So this bacteria, obviously it's not strong, it's not fast, but it is specific to its environment and it's really good at surviving in its own environment. So the word fit doesn't necessarily always mean the strongest and the fastest. It's just the most fit for its environment or fit enough for its environment. Okay, another misconception is humans are not evolving. Um, so this is not true. We can see evidence um, multiple places. This video, which I can't play through this program because you can't hear it, but I encourage you to find this Google Slides in the student materials and, and watch this video. This is about a population off the coast of Papua New Guinea. Um, they are indigenous people, and part of their practices uh, uh, for fishing, they dive really deep into the ocean and um, catch their fish that way. And so because of all that pressure from the water, the, um, the, the pressure from the water squeezes their, their spleen, and it actually causes their spleen to enlarge. Um, so this population of indigenous people have larger spleens than, than other um, populations of humans. So that is evidence that humans can change over time. So something as simple as, as the um, shape and size of the spleen. Evolution happened in the past, but it is no longer happening now. Again, this is not true. Humans are actually causing rapid evolution. And unfortunately, we're not going to have enough time this year to do the unnatural selection project. But there are many, many cases where humans are causing other populations to evolve, mainly because of uh, things that we're doing to harm the planet. So namely, uh, climate change is also causing a lot of um, populations to change. So again, if you have time, um, find this Google slideshow and watch this video. A lot of really cool examples. And we will talk about some examples in natural selection about how humans are um, causing natural selection. Okay, number six, my favorite one, one I hear all the time, humans evolved from monkeys. This is wrong for so many reasons. A better way to say this is humans and primates share a common ancestor. So I'm sure you guys have seen this picture on the left um, of the humans evolving from a monkey. This is not true. Evolution is not a ladder. We do not progressively get better or more complex. Evolution is a tree. So we branch out from common ancestors. So for example, here on the right, this is called a phylogenetic tree. You guys will learn how to interpret these I'm here, I think, um, two weeks. So chimpanzees and bonobos, they share a common ancestor that they branched out of from um, about three million years ago. Humans and chimps and bonobos share a common ancestor that we branched from about six million years ago. So it's not that we evolved from monkeys, because if that was true, monkeys would not be around anymore. Humans and primates share a common ancestor, and that common ancestor for all primates um, lived about 13 million years ago. Okay, another misconception. Evolution is not science because it is not testable or observable. This misconception encompasses two incorrect ideas. One, all science depends on controlled lab experiments, and two, evolution cannot be studied with such experiments. I hope we know now that science doesn't just happen in a lab. 
a lot of scientists go out into nature and they make observations and you can do studies that way. The same thing can be do, done with um, the evolution. Um, so for example, we can do this, we can cause evolution to happen. Here's Reggie, my other dog. <laughs> um, we can cause evolution to happen in a lab with bacteria, something as simple as bacteria. So for example, if we have a, a culture of bacteria, one of the bacterium in the group might be resistant to antibacterial medication. So that bacteria then survives and that bacteria um, increases in frequency over successive generations. So that is evolution, going from a batch of bacteria, culture of bacteria, where only one is resistant to an antibiotic medication to then eventually the entire population being um, resistant to that um, medication. That is evolution. Um, number eight, gaps in the fossil record disprove evolution. So many organisms don't have body parts that fossilize. Hard body parts fossilize like bones, shells, soft body parts like tissue do not fossilize. Um, and on top of that, fossils have to have really good environmental conditions in order to stick around. So it has to be dry, but not too dry. Hot, but not too hot. Or cold, but not too cold. Um, we've only discovered a small percentages of, of the fossils that um, might be preserved somewhere on Earth. <laughs> My dog's going crazy. Um, and so scientists expect that there are going to be some gaps in the evolutionary transitions, um, and there will be gaps in the fossil record. That is expected. Okay, so those are all of the misconceptions. Um, now I'm going to jump over to the student e-learning plan. So these are all of the standards that we are going to hit this these last couple weeks. And um, I have exactly on here what is going to be on the summative, what we're going to ask you to do. So I'm not going to read this to you guys, but I would like you to, ex to explore this handout um, before we begin. So evidence for evolution, which we're going to do this week. Natural selection A and B, we're going to spend about two weeks on that. Taxonomy and speciation and survival of the fittest, we are going to spend about two to three weeks on those as well. And then, like I said earlier, this unnatural selection project, um, we actually just aren't going to have enough time for, um, so that will not be assessed. All right, so this program that I'm going to use, that I'm using right now, um, is going to kick me off at 15 minutes, so I'm going to make a part two to this video. And in part two, I'm going to explain what we're going to do this week, and I'm going to go through the project and the materials and the expectations.